What if I told you that December 25th was a pagan day? Or what if I told you the pagans use December 25th as a day to complete a satanic ritual? What if I told you that? I guarantee most people have never heard that before. But the problem is, we don't ask questions. For instance, why do you bring a tree into your house on Christmas? Why do you put that star on the top of that tree? Why do you also deck it with ornaments with silver and gold? Also, why do people kiss under the mistletoe? Why do we light candles on Christmas? Why do you do all of these things? The answer is you don't even know. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get into the history and we're gonna find out where these things come from so you can make a conscious decision whether you wanna continue to follow and celebrate Christmas or not. We're gonna be reading from this book called Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. It says the festivals of Rome are innumerable, but five of the most important may be singled out for elucidation. Viz, Christmas Day, Lady Day, Easter, the Nativity of St. John, and the Feast of Assumption. Each and all of these can be proved to be Babylonian. And first, as to the festival in honor of the birth of Christ or Christmas, how comes it that the festival was connected with the 25th of December? There is not a word in the scriptures about the precise day of his birth or the time of year when he was born. What is recorded there implies that whatsoever time his birth took place, it could not have been on the 25th of December. December 25th goes all the way back to ancient Babylon. All right. They had paganistic customs and rituals. It was during the time of the winter and summer solstice. The winter solstice is the time where the night is at its longest extent. And a summer solstice is the time when the daytime is during its longest extent. So the pagans back then took these two days and they started to make deities out of them. With the winter solstice being dark, representing evil, and the summer solstice being the light, representing the good the pagans took these days and they started to make deities out of these days so for instance like the egyptian god horus he was born on december 25th the greek god helios he was born on december 25th the greco-roman god apollo he was born on december 25th the Hindu god Mithra was also born on December 25th. And also Baal, who was named after Nimrod, who after Nimrod's death became deified by his mother Semiramis and who was said to become the sun god, he was also born on December 25th. So all the historians and the elite know that December 25th was always used as a day to conjure up demons and to complete a satanic ritual. They already know this already. So what they've done is they've taken the Bible and they've amalgamated it with this pagan day and masked it over with Christ and got the whole world celebrating this demonic paganistic day without them even knowing. At the time that the angels announced his birth to the shepherds of Bethlehem, they were feeding their flocks by night in the open fields. Now, no doubt the climate of Palestine is not so severe as the climate of this country, but even there, though the heat of the day be considerable, the cold of the night from December to February is very piercing, and it was not the custom for the shepherds of Judea to watch their flocks in the open fields later than about the end of October. So, what the Bible does substantiate is that during the time that Christ was born, the shepherds were out in the fields grazing the flock. 
So Christ could not have been born during the time of December 25th because it was not the custom of the shepherds of Judea to be out in the dead middle of winter trying to graze flock. That is just not a custom of the shepherds of Judea. At the birth of Christ, every woman and child was to go to be taxed at the city whereto they belonged, whither some had long journeys, but the middle of winter was not fitting for such a business, especially for women with child and children to travel in. Therefore, Christ could not be born in the death of winter. You see that? They said Christ could not be born in the death of winter because during that time, Christ's parents had to go back to the city of Bethlehem where Christ was born to pay a tax because the Romans set up publicans so people could come back to the cities where they were from to pay tribute. And the Romans would not have set up a time like that during that time of winter because people had to travel. If you know anything about the history of Judea, if you know anything about the history of the Israelites, you know that they traveled on foot. They traveled on camels right but they don't have heat to keep themselves warm for them to travel like that like we have today we got cars we can jump in a car and drive 50 miles to a, to an area because we got heat in our car they didn't have that back then they had to travel on foot and they had to travel with animals so the romans would not have set up a taxation time during the dead middle of winter for these people to come pay tribute it just would not happen so that also proves that christ was not born during the time of december 25th okay so let's get the definition of christmas out of the zondervan bible dictionary it says christmas the anniversary of the birth of Christ and its observance celebrated by most Protestants and Roman Catholics on December 25th, by Eastern Orthodox churches on January 6th, and by the Armenian church on January 19th. The first mention of its observance on December 25th is in the time of Constantine, about AD 325. The date of the birth of Christ is not known. See, all of the scholars know that Christ was not born on December 25th. They know this already. They know Christ was, this is factual information to all of the scholars. They know this. Constantine even knew when he set it up, he knew that Christmas had nothing to do with Christ. He knew that already. He knew it was a pagan day to complete a satanic ritual. He knew that. How then did the Romish church fix on December the 25th as Christmas day? Why thus? Long before the 4th century and long before the Christian era itself, a festival was celebrated among the heathen at the precise time of the year in honor of the birth of the son of the Babylonian queen of heaven. And back during the time of the Romans, they had a day called Saturnalia. It was the same thing as Christmas, the same way you celebrate Christmas today. They celebrated Saturnalia on the same scale that we celebrate Christmas today, where these men would walk around with no clothes on. They would engage in sexual acts with other men. They would give each other gifts and sing songs. And it was the same way you celebrate Christmas today. That's where the concept of Christmas came from, Saturnalia. So these people were celebrating Christmas way before they ever heard about a Christ. Way before they ever heard about a Christ, they were celebrating Christmas. The Romans were with Saturnalia. This Saturnalia is started out with two days from December 17th to December 19th. And then they changed it all the way to a week. So the Romans of antiquity were celebrating Christmas before they knew anything about a Christ. They were celebrating Christmas. The only difference is they was worshiping the Babylonian god Nimrod reincarnated as Talmud. And they changed his name to Saturn. It's the same God. It is the same exact God. And if you know anything about the history of religion, you know all the religion comes from Rome. Rome gave everybody their religion. That's where the Baptists come from. That's where the Seven Day Adventists come from. That's where the Jehovah's Witness come from. That's where the Catholics come from. That's where Christianity comes from. It all comes from ancient Rome. And it may be fairly presumed that in order to conciliate the heathen and to swell the number of the nominal adherents of Christianity, the same festival was adopted by the Roman church, giving it only the name of Christ. This tendency on the part of Christians to meet paganism halfway was very 
early develop. So during the time of Constantine, Constantine devised a wicked scheme so he can take the Christians and the pagans and bring them under one umbrella. That's what he was trying to do. But at the time, the pagans was kicking back against it. The pagans didn't want to do it because the pagans thought they was going to have to give up their Saturnalia and all the other things that they was worshiping. So Constantine said, you know what? If you guys like to worship that Saturnalia and all these other demonic things that y'all like to do, don't worry about that. You can still do that if you come under this branch of Christianity. And the Christians, they knew that they can still worship Jesus and all these other things. So the pagans was like, hey, if I don't have to give up nothing and I can keep doing all the same things I've been doing, hey, sh hey let's do it. Let's make it happen. We can do it. So that's how all the pagans and the Christians came under one umbrella through Constantine. Even though Constantine knew it had nothing to do with Christ. It had nothing to do with it. He knew that. Just like Constantine knew, the pastors know too. You got these pastors going around teaching everybody that December 25th is Christ's birthday. When it has nothing to do with Christ at all. Nothing. And even when you go to like Walmart and all these stores, you don't see anything about Christ. You hear Santa Claus is coming to town. You hear Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You don't hear nothing about Christ at all. Nothing. Because it has nothing to do with Christ. They know that already. Trust me, they know this already. And they got the whole world celebrating this demonic pagan day and don't even know they conjuring up demons and spirits. And we find Tertullian, even in his day, about the year 230, bitterly lamenting the inconsistency of the disciples of Christ in this respect, and contrasting it with the strict fidelity of the pagans to their own superstition. By us, says he, who are strangers to the Sabbaths and new moons and festivals once acceptable to God the Saturnalia, the Feast of January, the Brumalia, and Matronalia are now frequented. Gifts are carried to and fro, New Year's Day presents are made with din, and sports and banquets are celebrated with uproar. Oh, how much more faithful are the heathen to their religion, who take special care to adopt no solemnity from the Christians. Upright men strive to stem the tide, but in spite of all their efforts, the apostasy went on till the church, with the exception of a small remnant, was submerged under the pagan superstition. So during that time, when Constantine brought everybody under the same roof, you still had a few group of Christians who were still following Christ, who still wanted to, to, to follow the Bible as it is written. But because so many pagans came in during that time, they kind of washed those Christians out and they eventually moved on and let paganism take over. And that's how we got Christmas today because it was passed down from the Babylonians to Rome to the Greeks and everybody else. And that's how we got it today. That Christmas was originally a pagan festival is beyond all doubt. The time of year and the ceremonies with which it is still celebrated proves its origins. In Egypt, the son of Isis, the Egyptian title for the queen of heaven, was born at this very time, about the time of the winter solstice. The very name by which Christmas is popularly known among ourselves, Yule Day, proves at once its pagan and Babylonian origin. Yule, as the Chaldee name for an infant or little child, and as the 25th of December was called by our pagan Anglo-Saxon ancestors, Yule Day, or the Child's Day, at the night that it preceded it, Mother Night, long before they came into contact with Christianity, that sufficiently proved its real character. The candles in some parts of England, lighted on Christmas Eve and used so long as the festive seasons last, were equally lighted by the pagans on the eve of the festival of the Babylonian god to do honor to him for it was one of the distinguishing peculiarities of his worship to have lighted wax candles on his altars. So when you light those candles, guess what? You are representing and worshiping Nimrod. It is completing a satanic ritual. 
It is Babylonian. It is a paganistic custom. And what's crazy to me is most Christians think that they're worshiping Christ by celebrating Christmas, not knowing in the very Bible that they read, it tells you not to worship it. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. You see that? So in the Bible, it says, learn not the way of the heathen. It said they take a tree and they cut it out the forest and they deck it with silver and gold. What is that talking about? Christmas. That Christmas tree represents a false god. The Christmas tree, now so common among us, was equally common in pagan Rome and pagan Egypt. In Egypt, that tree was the palm tree. In Rome, it was the fir, the palm tree denoting the pagan Messiah as Baal Tamar, the fir referring to him as Baal Berith, the mother of Adonis, the sun god and great mediatorial divinity was mystically said to have changed into a tree. You see that? So these are all pagan gods, Baal Tamar, and Baal Berith. These are all false gods that stem from pagan Babylon. So when you bring in that tree in the house and decking it and trying to fix this tree up all pretty and putting lights on it, you are completing a satanic ritual. It's Babylonian. So we need to understand where these things stem from before we start celebrating certain holidays and we need to understand where they come from. A lot of these things are pagan. They come from ancient Babylon. And a lot of these things are basically having the entire world completing a satanic ritual.